These are my tools for making great PS2 tutorials. Let's do this. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. We got a really great PS2 tutorial today, and I just want to showcase how you can run RetroArch on your PS2. Granted, this is the very early stages, so hopefully as time goes on, RetroArch becomes a more mature product, and we'll have more cores, and have a lot more features, and just have a lot of fun. So let me show you how this works so far. In my particular case, I'm using a modded PS2, fat or slim, that's running Free Make Boot. Your um, method will also require a modded PS2 of some sort, or maybe you have FHDB for the fat PS2. So whatever your case may be, you need a method to load .elf files. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get started. In the video description, I'll have a link to this website where you can get the latest build of RetroArch. So what I did is I basically went to the very bottom of the list and download the .7z file, or you can also go into the latest folder here and download what you need. So at the time of this video recording, we have this 2048.elf. This is like a, a real basic um, numbers kind of tile kind of game. This next one here, this is an emulator for NES. I don't, don't think it works too well, at least in the games I've tested, so I don't recommend that for now. Pico Drive is more for like Sega, Genesis type of games. And then Quick NES is also for NES, and this works pretty well. So what I ended up doing was on the previous page here, I downloaded this latest version, .7z, and I'm on Windows. So what you want to do is you can right-click on here, say 7-zip, and extract to its own folder. And this is what the contents of that folder looks like. So in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click, I'm going to cut it, I'm going to go to my USB thumb drive that I have plugged into my computer right now, which is formatted as FAT32. And I'm just going to paste it right here in the root of the of the thumb drive here. Also, what I have on my desktop is I have a folder called ROMs. Inside this ROMs folder, I have an NES and Sega. So I have Battletoads as the NES example. And for Sega, I have the Eternal Champions as another example. So what I'm going to do here is I could copy or cut it. I'm just going to copy it for now. And I'll put it onto my USB thumb drive. File structure doesn't matter too much because we're going to use the ulaunch elf program basically on your PS2 to navigate to your mass drive, your USB thumb drive, and uh, launch these um, emulators basically and the games. So what I'm going to do is the next portion of the tutorial, I'll show you that process, how that works. We're going to demonstrate the quick NES and we'll also demonstrate the Pico drive as well. So with that said, let's jump straight into the next portion of the video tutorial. Let's do this. All right, so here we are with my PS2. I'm running Free McBoot 1.95. Down here is my PS2 with my memory card and my USB thumb drive. So what we're going to do is first, let's go ahead, run Ulaunch Elf, and we're going to demonstrate real quickly here both emulators that are working well at the time of this video recording. So if I go to my mass drive, I'm going to run the quick NES first and showcase a Nintendo game, which is going to be Battletoads. So what you do here is go to load content. I'm going to use circle, go to mass, circle, go to ROMs, go to NES, Battletoads, quick NES, and that's it. So I haven't tested too many games, but the games I have tested so far, they work great. Audio works great. Frame per second is great. All that stuff is great. Safe states are not working yet, so hopefully they work in the future, so that'd be awesome. But if you're familiar with using RetroArch, cores on other consoles, handhelds, whatever, then you're going to feel right at home here with the PS2. This is awesome. So in terms of controls, the D-pads work fine. X and 0 is what you want to use for your A and B buttons, basically. Um, I think select and start works, so I can you know pause the game that way. But uh, there's no, there is no way to uh, reset the game from using the controller. So what you got to do is basically press the power button on the PS2. So that's the NES test. Let me just reset my PS2 and we'll run the Pico drive. So what I did there as a shortcut was I held down R1. So when it booted, it boots straight into this ulaunch alpha. Okay, so we're gonna go to file browser, go to mass, and let's run the Pico drive that elf. Oh, 
Okay, so from here we're gonna to go to load content and go back to my mask, go to my ROMs, go to my Sega, and run an example game today, which is Eternal Champions. Um, I guess depending on the game that you pick, um, you know, most games they sure work out fine, but if your game has issues with audio, then it, it could just be, you know, this early state of the emulator. I don't think the Pico Drive is 100% perfect, um, but I think sometimes the games that you select, it might be glitchy. So with that said, just play around with it. All right, so far music seems to be okay. Do a quick gameplay test here. Give you guys a taste of how this works. This one audio is not 100% sync, so I've not tested many Sega games actually, so this could be just not a good example. But you know, give it a try. Maybe you can try Sonic or Mortal Kombat or some other games like that, maybe you might have better success here. So just play around. Like I said, the emulator is in an early state, so it's possible it can get much better in the near future and with more cores as well. So that is today's PS2 Retro Arch tutorial. If you guys have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.